Hello. 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 Every Rush Song. Hello and welcome to the number one Rush podcast recorded in Tim's backyard. You are joining us for Every Rush Song. And today, that song that we will be discussing, analyzing, is what are we doing, Jay? We're doing time standstill. I'm not looking back, but I want to look around and time standstill. See all of the places and the people that surround me. Oh, it was beautiful. Oh, All right, well, gorgeous. Yeah. So, yes. Anyone else ever think it was time stands still? No, no. Really? I uh, uh, I bought the album the day it came out. In fact, I skipped classes at Taco Jocko so I could go. I bought that, <laughs> and I bought the Rush Archives album set of Rush Fly by Impressive Steel, and so I knew from day one that the songs title was time standstill because i can read well i here's guess the, i can't read because <laughs> I, I have to admit i just realized that uh i just found out uh just now that the song title is time stand still not stands still as i wrote in my notes <laughs> and by the way tim I'm pretty sure that wasn't the only time you skipped class in college. <laughs> no, but it was the <laughs> first time. Was it? And and that was that started the snowball effect right there. I had never skipped until that day. Tim and I had a a hit. Was it history class? Together, yes, we were taking and... American history class. Yes. I don't know much about history. Well, look. Uh, cause I remember from day one of that class, you know, the professor said something about, uh, if you don't good, do good on the first test, um, it, it's going to be really difficult for you to pass. And I studied my ass off. I was watching Maverick games, studying my notes, blah, 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 blah. And see, I didn't really care about the Mavericks, but I needed something on in the background, you know? Sure. And yeah. I studied Shane. Yes. Didn't do a damn thing. And I think he made a 94 on the test and I squeaked by with a 72 and I said, well, it's just going to get worse from here. Hermione, let me borrow her notes. So Hermione. <laughs> Hermione. Oh, Hermione. Wow. Hermione. I didn't know you guys took class at Hogwarts. It's awesome. <laughs> yeah, listen, it was, I was at Hogwarts Junior College. <laughs> so when we said on our favorite Rush songs, when I said, time stand still, Tim, you called me a sellout. Do you stand by that? Do you still call me a... No, you're not a sellout. Time stand still is a great song. I, I love that song. Uh, I just thought it was very... commercially yeah of you to pick that song and yeah. to say that rush ever went commercial is ridiculous but look it was the first time they ever had a guest vocalist or really a guest anything in the studio with them with amy mann of till tuesday it, isn't that the only time I mean, they haven't had it? They never had anybody else, right? Just well, okay. Other than it, it, it actually, but except for that's actually right. Ben Mink did the electric violin solo on losing it on signals. So yeah. I guess really to say the first time for anybody is wrong because of him, but for a vocalist, Damn. Damn yeah, she was the was... only, uh, she's the only vocalist though. Right. I mean, there's no other vocalist. Well, up until they did Presto. There was another vocalist on Presto? Yeah, Rupert Hine, who was the producer yeah. of that album, did some, like, uh, or at the end of the song, uh, Chain Lightning. It comes to this abrupt ending, and you hear this deep voice go, That's nice. 
<laughs> that was Ruba Kine. He had some of the that harmonies too, didn't he? Did he not? There's no credit for him doing that, but poor guy, poor guy. Yeah. Anyways, mm -hmm. we're not and, talking uh, about that. Well, and we're there talking was about um, time stand still. There was other Voices singers that they were gonna me. get that they had also talked to about doing that, and then settled on Amy. May. Have you heard any? Do you, do you like any of her other work? I like well, Voices Carry. Yeah, I. That's the one song that I know because I saw Till Tuesday open up for Daryl Hall and John Oates uh, when I was a sophomore. Okay, and she played that, that was, song. I was like, yeah. I mean, I liked that song. Was she? Uh, well, she didn't have a. She had an album called Everything's Different Now that I think came out in eighty six or so, and with Till Tuesday, it was I guess the last Till Tuesday album, and really good album. You ever get a chance mm. to just check out albums till Tuesday? Everything is different now. It's got a lot, lot of nice harmonies, good songs. It says nice here in instrumentation on, on Wikipedia. It says that okay. in 2014 she released an album with Ted Lasso. Oh no, Ted Leo. Never mind. <laughs> carry on, my wayward sons. Carry on. Well, she has done a lot of solo albums. Yeah, including one and another one for Modoc. She did the soundtrack for Modoc, and which is a Marvel thing. He's the the villain that's like a big head with arms and legs. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Anyway, good album. Well, back to the story. The the the, the subject at hand. Time stand still. Time stand still makes more sense to me now. A lot. It really does. So, <laughs> Do y'all, do y'all, how much does it mean it? Is it like a special song for you? Do you have any special meanings that you get from it? Nope. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I, and I'll, t I'll tell you when that song came back to hit me. And that was about midway through my son's senior year uh, of high school playing yeah. football. And it was about halfway through the season where I'm like, this is, this is, he's only got five more games left. They've only won one. Um, this is going by really quick because it seems like it was just yesterday. He was a freshman playing on the football team. And now here, here he is. And then it was like two weeks later, we, you know, they do senior night and going out on the field with them, holding a baby face picture of them, whatever, and, you know, blah, blah, <laughs> blah, blah. And I was listening to that song a lot because that's what I was pretty much screaming in internally. You know, this is going by way too quick. I need this time to just slow down. Let me Stop. take a look at everything going on to, to let it absorb and sink in. You needed time to stand still. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was kind yes. of, I mean, I listened to it for years, just completely clueless. Just, in fact, kind of stopped listening to it and most of Hold Your Fire in general, because not one of my favorite albums. But then recently listened to it, listening to it, really listening to the lyrics. And I was like, oh, wow. How did he, because he was, he was younger when he wrote it. Yeah. Oh, that's a lot of wisdom for a guy as young as he was at the time. Some of the. Some of the themes that he talks about in in there, well, in the song, I mean, in the lyrics, like the the lyric in the lyric uh, along those lines, in the lyric, uh, freeze this moment, yeah, a bit longer, right? Heat sensation a little bit stronger. I mean, that's that's some powerful stuff right there. The innocent slips away, and yeah. experience, experience slips away. Slips away. You know, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. So I like the setup where turn my back to the wind and catch my breath before I start off again. Because right. it he doesn't really say I'm going against the wind, I'm going into the wind, but that's I mean, all these things that we're doing that are either working towards something in the future or away from something in the past. And it always seems like it's progress, but just like if you're if you're riding a bicycle in the wind or running. In the wind, against the wind, you're taking, you're doing a lot more. You're putting forth the energy. You're expanding the energy, but you're not getting, you're not getting anywhere. You're not getting as far. It just seems like it. 
because you're against the wind. And so he just stops for a second, turns away from the wind to catch a breath, and then just goes right back into doing it again. In the right. Song. You know, it's sort of like a play on what John Lennon wrote about life is what happens while you're busy making other plans. We're so busy with the day-to-day -day struggles of life, and you've got this thing coming up, so you're, you're busy making plans for that while all the other little intricate things of life is happening around you, and you're just missing it. Yeah. I mean, that's an uh, example of, of that. Uh, recently, I've, I've noticed Jack White being the main person, but artists not allowing phones into their concerts so that people will actually sit, sit and listen to the music. Listen to the music and not just... Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, I and I watched somebody. It was during a it was during a golf uh, match uh, this past summer, and I'm watching this guy, and he's following this guy that was about to win, you know, and and so he's he's taking pictures, he's filming it, he's filming the guy, and he's not even looking at the guy. He's looking at his phone, at the guy right. in the camera, at the at the movies. guy in the camera. Yeah. He's he's missing the moment while while trying to capture the moment it's like just throw away the phone and just feel the moment be in the moment yeah but because... see that's why technology is the demise of the world i now, agree th th think about it you're in, not wrong in our hometown here in the dfw metroplex we've got the death star dallas cowboy <laughs> stadium <laughs> which is true with his way too big ginormous tv screen mm -hmm. that everybody you, finds themselves just watching that stay at home and if you're sitting up high enough you can't even see the field because the screen's in right so because we're just oh look at this great technology we have and so yeah, yeah. It's a little ironic that they they're filming it to capture this moment but they're they're taking themselves out of that moment, moment. to try to capture it Right, right. And just like Neil says, you know, the, make the sensation a little bit stronger or make each impression a little bit longer. They're, they're weakening the sensation and they're weakening the impression it's going to make by having it right there in front of them, yet viewing it through the little screen. Right. And chances are the only time that video they're taking is ever going to get used is when they post it on social media somewhere going, look at the cool thing that I, no, no, no. What they'll do is had a blast attending this thing. Had right. a great time doing this thing, and then they'll probably never look at it again and won't ever have that sensation and that experience of just relishing, just totally being in that moment. Enjoy just like the moment. people Damn who it, are Neil, why did you do that? Just like the people who are constantly taking picture of the dinner they're about to eat, they spend so much time getting the perfect picture. By the time they put that phone it's down, cold. pick up the fork, <laughs> yeah, it's gone cold on them. But they'll nope. still say, oh, this was the greatest thing <laughs> yeah. I've ever had in it my was, life. It was lukewarm. But you know what you have to do? You put it in portrait mode, and then you hold the phone right up. Oh, see? <laughs> Here we go. And tell me, are we not guilty of this without a moment to spend to pass the evening with a drink and a friend? Mm -hmm. I mean, we're all pretty good at getting together somewhat regularly. But I know that's one of the things I loved about visiting my in-laws in Spain is Every night when you go walking around in the evening, people are out in the parks and on all the terraces and all the friends and neighbors are out just shooting the shit and drinking and eating. And maybe it's just an American, a North American thing. Summer's going fast. Suburban. Night's growing colder. Children growing up. Old friends growing older. Yes. Yeah. That, yeah. That's, you see that a lot in literature. It's well, away, man. Yeah. they'll compare uh, getting older to your our later years as being fall and then winter so that's kind of a a neat metaphor there which winter is and, coming indeed and then more literally you know the children are growing up like tim mentioned mm -hmm. with his son's football you know and the same thing with my daughter's shows she's got beauty and the beast coming up and i'm just like 
okay, she's got two more shows. Hopefully she'll have some more in college because if she's really only has time for the high school musical, she's got two left. So right. better enjoy. Yeah. Is she Beauty doing something Beauty. else besides the uh, Beauty and the Beast? Not now, not currently, and probably not because her homework is, I mean, kind of apropos to the song, her homework, she has so much homework to 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 do her best to get ready to be able to afford, to get into a college and, and be yeah. able to afford it that, you know, Everything now is all this uh, work, working for school, which is kind of, that's just another society, societal thing that bugs me. Is like entire kids' lifetimes now are just one 18-year college prep course. What, and we, we don't let kids live anymore because everything's got to be about not getting in trouble, not having a bad grade, not missing homework for any time making sure that every soccer or or baseball performance is is up to up to par so you can get a scholarship it's oh, and, it's, and, and, and it starts and i'm yeah. sorry go ahead, go ahead Tim. are you sure yeah because i was gonna let you go no you go see i'm trying to let but the I time gonna... stand still <laughs> so we could enjoy this moment of who's going to talk next you know what i'll say something next no you've been talking enough that's all I uh, I was going to say, like, and again, with, with the sports thing with kids, it's not about, you know, that fall season of playing soccer. I mean, there are still some here. YMCA is still, you know, doing stuff like that. Kids nowadays, they're all playing on select teams. And, Every and that's, and that, right. And it's all year long. They, they'll take a month off here and there. My daughter's got, uh, one of her best friends is she is, she's a really good softball player, but she gets about a month off at the end of school. And then she's in Oklahoma, Colorado, Arizona every weekend because she's playing select softball. She doesn't really have that much of a summer, you know, and because it's so driven. Oh, if you want to get, you know, a, 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 without a moment to spend. State, if you if you want to get that good college scholarship, this is what you got to do now. Yeah, just just being Otherwise, good in high school ball isn't good enough. So it's just too it's, much. It's too much, man. It's too much pressure to put on kids. I mean, no wonder people are breaking down and and kids are having uh, you know mental health problems. You know, it's, there's so much stress on them. You know, I thought, I thought, I thought we had it hard when we were in high school. It was easy yeah, compared was a, to what, you know, what, what they got to go through today. Yeah, exactly. You know, and it's just, it's, and, and it starts in like preschool. I mean, yeah. finding the best preschool and what all that kind of crap. And it's just. And so what enough. are their parents doing at the time? They're all preoccupied about doing that, and life is just passing them by. Exactly. They're working they miss... overtime so that they can afford the private school. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So Neil was so well read. We really don't know for sure where he got inspiration from from a lot of different sources, but there's a couple. There's one line in particular that struck me. Strikes me as very stoic. The like some pilgrim who learns to transcend, learns to live as each step was the end. There's the there's the stoic principle called memento mori. Have you heard that heard that before? About remember death and just think every moment that every moment could be your last. So enjoy that moment, and that's kind of what he's got the live learns to live as each step was the end like any any step along that journey could be the end and then, take each breath as it as though it was your last live okay. live in the moment seize the day all that good stuff because we we always think about and it's funny we're recording this coming up but thanks thanksgiving's just around the corner and we all whenever we think of a pilgrim we think of the people with the weird hats and right. eating turkey dinner with the native americans i guess before they exploit them and um not that I don't support Thanksgiving, love Thanksgiving, but Bill, like once, once they're at this place or not, they've already reached that destination. They're not, they're not pilgrims 
anymore at that point. They're settlers. So I'm pretty sure Neil probably had that distinction when he wrote that line about a pilgrim who learns to transcend. Because if it, right. pilgrims is when they're on the journey. And then there's, you know, there's the, um, excuse me, the Camino Santiago in Spain, the walk from pretty much just this town that you walk to on the, on the, which is where am I? On the east coast of Spain, on the west coast of Spain, and you can walk from anywhere. And they call the people that are walking this, they call them pilgrims because it's this, you know, this journey and it's kind of dangerous. And sometimes it's kind of hard along the way. And when you, if you go back in time to the original people that made this pilgrim, made this pilgrimage, they never knew, they never really expected to make it to the destination, to the holy destination. You know, kind of like the, what is it? Point of a journey is not to arrive. Kind of that, that theme there. And it, so it, for the pilgrims, really, the pilgrimage isn't about the destination. The, the whole journey becomes the holy place. The pilgrimage becomes the holy. Right. And yes. It so reminds it, me of a, a brilliant song that I've heard. Uh, it's, it's been <laughs> several years ago. It's it's not the road. Oh, it's the ride. That is, deep. yeah, the great lyric. I don't know who that was. Can't remember. See, and that is always my favorite part of the vacation. Yeah, the vacation's fun, sure, and when you reach your destination, right. But I'm all about the road trip. Oh, I love the road trip. I, yeah, I just oh. love the road trip. I used to love to make like a road trip mix. Like a CD, yes. just put all the songs. Now I just, you know, I can make a playlist or whatever, but I love it. I love the road trip. I have, I love, uh, I love travel food, like, you know, like Slim Jims and, and, and going anything and stopping out at a Bucky's. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> well, and I can tell you from being in travel, nobody, people want to fly. They want to be yeah. there. They don't want to enjoy the whole journey. It's, I want to be there. In two well, hours, not in six. I love it. I love missing out. It's kind I love of the journey. I love the journey. So I was looking for something. I was trying to looking for something about time stand still online. And this once, more than one site said that the entire song is in four four time. Really, that's yeah. very unusual. <laughs> I'm thinking about the, cause they don't, it, there's not a guitar solo, but no. it's the little jam with Amy da, man da, da, doing da, a bunch da, of Oz and news. Yeah. Right. Add in the da, intro, da, they're all in seven da. chords, da. which is cool. I mean, you don't really know, unless you're trying to count it, you don't notice it. Or Six, I guess maybe if you're trying to do it. No, 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 no. They're wrong. Cause that yeah. middle section's in seven, four. Yeah. It's in seven, four. In the very beginnings in seven, that little break each time is. Yeah. That guitar riff is seven four time, mm. which right, which makes me yes. Happy. Now, Good time signature. The one negative thing I have about don't time you. stand still, and that's the music video. <laughs> the music video, okay, maybe at the time that they shot the video, okay. <laughs> That might have been high production value, but when you look at it today, you just go, oh, well, yeah. And then, of course, Getty with his raccoon haircut at oh, the man. time. That phase of his hair was the worst. Between yeah. That, pressure through. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, one's... yeah, that just, that, Ged, that just wasn't good. No. Uh, now, no. there is a funny part in the video. So when we're talking about that middle section and it's just streaming all these different shots of Alex Getty and Neil, and they're all standing really close to Neil's drum kit. And they're just playing do, 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 do. But there's one part where Getty and Alex are just jumping in synchronization <laughs> up and down. And there's a time that Neil actually looks up smiling at the camera, you know, which you never, ever saw. I do like that part, but. Oh my gosh. The one, the one thing oh. I did not understand at the end was, you know, Amy Mann's all busy throughout the whole video, videoing them because she's working a camera. But so, and you get the very last, 
bomb, bomb, bomb. And then her and her camera just take off and fly off into the distance. <laughs> and Getty and Alex are just looking at her and Neil stands up from behind the kit, turns around and all three of them just looking at her fly. Uh, I'm just, okay. I guess that was a good way to end the video. Thank you. Good night. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Most but music that's videos are but stupid. that's it. Wow. And I'm trying to remember how high did Time Stand Still rank in the music charts when it came out? I don't know. I wish we had a way to find out something like that in America on 2020. What, what year is it? 2020? It was 22. 2000. 22. 22. I hope this episode comes out in 2022. Well, otherwise, yeah, that, that, we're going to look really dumb. <laughs> yes. 23. 23. Uh, uh, I don't think it'll be that long. Jay, you haven't looked it up yet? I'm looking it up now. I, uh, it I do like... Oh, my goodness. This cannot be Tell us, Jay. Real. Tell us, Jay. Okay. Us. So, according to... Fine, uh, don't tell us. According to uh, Wikipedia, the song... Time stands still peak at number three on the U.S. mainstream rock star charts. Wow. Wow. Interesting. That, that's interesting. In the U.S. Huh. But still not as high as their, I think it's still their highest charted song. Does anybody know that one? Don't look it up. <laughs> I'm going to guess it's, uh, it's, it's going to be, um, Tom Sawyer. No. Really? To the heart? No. What? Uh, oh, roll man, the bones. 1977? No. Really? New World Man. Made really? it up to number two. Oh, almost didn't make the album, and then look at that. Right. Yeah, look it was that. a throwaway. Hmm. And they said, wait a second, guys. Countdown's pretty long. Digital Man's pretty long, but we're about two minutes and fifty-four seconds away from being able to complete the album. Okay, well, I was messing with this little reggae thing, and <laughs> and we do get yes. Nils. Don't we get Nils? Hi hat thing. I mean, uh, ride symbol thing. Oh, on time stand still. Yeah. Yes. Yes, we do. Yeah, yes. Yeah. And then I like on the pre-course when he's just doing the beats with the ride. Yep. Yeah. I'm, oh man, I, I'm obsessed with Neil's ride symbol work. He just does the coolest things, and I don't know if it's it's probably his drumming, but probably the 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 engineering too, where they just you know what we have to capture the ride signal, ride symbol, and all the other toms, all that stuff, but we have to make sure we get that ride because he's doing really cool things on the ride symbol. Yeah, I mean. Yeah. And then it had There's something interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I disagree with me. I'm wrong. Then, yeah. And there's a lot of cool yeah. things in the headphones too with the percussion because there's a lot of cool stuff in a fill or all, it's all of a sudden over on the left side. Right. And, yes. And super cool. Are there, it seems like it, it, it on that part, I guess it's the pre course where he's doing that upbeat uh -huh. ride. And then there's like a little, a lot of little. Things going on too, right? And is there I any wanted... overdubbing in that, or is he? No, 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 no. I think that was uh, hitting triggers. Uh -huh. So he could hit trigger a trigger, and when he hit that voice. one tom, he got the tom sound plus that little little echo or whatever it was. Yeah, uh -huh. so interesting. You know, not that he's. I mean, he's pretty good. And, you know, he was okay. For his time. Yeah. Or you mean any other time. You mean <laughs> since time began. Exactly. Yes. yes. Right. Oh, wait. You know what, Tim? Give us one jump scare. <laughs> oh, hey, that was good. I, oh, my I gosh. Me. Wow. That was good. Wow. Can we keep our PG rating? Oh, no, we can't because Jay said the F word. Damn. I did not. You did you say the F word you earlier. You, you, you got to improve yeah. that. There's no way you can prove that. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> now he's moonwalking in the dark. No, he's just mooning. Wow. 
Any other thoughts? Anything from your notes that we left out of? Time stands still. No, actually, we hit upon most of my notes. My notes were like three lines. I so. would like to ask the listeners mm. if anybody knows for sure. That's what's important. You know, that was one of the things, you know, being so young at the time, I'm I'm going, how are they going to perform Time Stand Still Live? Is Amy Mann going on tour with them? And she'll be opening up and then just come out and sing her part. But, you know, of course, the greatness of Rush, playing with tracks and stuff. Yeah. But I want to say it was the Presto Tour because on a couple of songs like Superconductor, Alex actually had a keyboard on stage and he was playing some keyboard parts. But and, I wanna, that album. and I want to, and I, and I want to say, cause Alex isn't doing anything through the whole time stands still, um, that I, he I remember just like Amy man. it was a dead Amy man. Um, wow. If she was dead, I'm just saying. That's what she would sound like. I don't think she would make a sound at all. Shut up. Was, okay. Laugh, you don't know. <laughs> but but I think Alex at that point was actually playing that part on the keyboard. So they had sampled that and he would play that. Oh yeah. It it made it yeah, it uh, sounded but like but it. I don't know if that's if mm -hmm. that's absolutely correct. So hmm. every rush fan song people listeners it, chime in and let us know if what i'm saying is correct or not <laughs> yeah chime in give us a call on the hotline yes. 787 13 no what sorry wrong 787 2112 oh i wonder if we could get a phone number so get 2112 <laughs> 1-800 something 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 2112 no but yeah it would yeah be... i'm glad you said that tim because we don't eight, want eight, eight, eight. this to be the final word we want we want one eight hundred YYZ twenty one twelve. I think yes. somebody has it. Yeah, call it's. It. I want to come. This is an ongoing it. conversation. Right. This is a conversation yeah. this is that just, never ends. This is the beginning. This is just the beginning. Yeah, and about right. Amy Mann, about that track. Something I learned. Listen to another podcast. A podcast called the the Rushcast. Mm -hmm. If you look up something for nothing in whatever Letters. podcast, a uh, really good show. They. They had brought it, they had brought to my attention and whoever else listened that Amy Mann never once did some special performance where she sang this part with them live. She never sang, performed this with Rush Live. Right. Yeah. Weird. Well, you would think that, you know, at some point, may, maybe just once, you know, hey, yeah, like some special or, or, event. Yeah, well, well, right. Like maybe a couple of shows on the R40 tour at some point. You know, they, they could have played Time to Stand Still and have Amy Mann come out. She now, must have again, pissed them off. Again, she only does a little bit of vocal work. So for her to just gonna be save her like on the three stage, words. I mean, what is she going to do? Come up with a tambourine part, you know, and <laughs> no, sing just... her Time to Stand Still and her She ooh. could fly away at the end. She could play, nice now, that play would some be acoustic awesome. guitar. Yeah. <laughs> Make her fly no. around. <laughs> yeah, they, they'd, give her, they'd give her a camera. And she'd be up on the stage following them around with the camera. Exactly. And then, yeah. and then she'd blow up at the end. That yes. would be funny. They weren't opposed to funny. No, no. Or and no. that would have been great. 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 Well, this has been fun, y'all. Yes, it has been fun. And I've enjoyed the moment. We should. Pass the evening. Hey, drink me too. Jay, me too. Tim, Dave Growl. Chris Christopherson, Salvador Dali, just enjoying the moment, talking about Rush. Talking Hello, about Dali. Well, if you want to join in on those conversations, we are every Rush song on every social media platform I can found. I just recently, I, I signed us up on Reddit. I don't even know what that is. Tumblr. I don't know what it is, but we're every Rush song on it. So yeah. just swipe right. Swipe right. Is that no? Is, that is there scatological? What are you talking? About? I don't know. All right, Tim, I, take us home as only you can, please. Sir. Thank you very kindly. Yep.